Do you see anything strange about the front of this Su-27 fighter jet? Well, there's really nothing strange except for this odd bump. You'll see this on many modern fighter planes. Here you have it on the European Eurofighter Typhoon, on the South Korean KF-21, and on the Russian Su-57. However, you'll never see anything like it on an American fighter plane. What is this strange bump? How is it that it once helped detect an unidentified flying object? Why will you never see it on an American plane? And more importantly, how is it that these systems promise to make stealth planes obsolete? In this video, we will try to answer these questions so that you know much more about your favorite fighter planes. So get comfortable, my name is Kevin Aguilar and this is Kunz Club. Do you remember this unidentified flying object video that the United States declassified a few years ago? Well, this video was captured by an infrared search and track. To cut to the chase, this strange protrusion on the world's most advanced planes is nothing more than an infrared search and track system. Or in English, infrared search and track system. These systems are extremely useful in military aviation. We can understand this system as a kind of radar. It has the same purpose, to find whatever is not our friend. But this, of course, operates differently and provides a lot of advantages that radars cannot give. That's why they're used with it. As we know, airplanes, no matter how advanced they are, emit heat to a greater or lesser extent. Heat emits infrared waves. These waves are captured by infrared search and track systems to thus detect any object that emits atypical heat in the environment from a distance. So they are basically thermal cameras. This is a concept completely different from radar. Radar, instead of just receiving radiation, emits and receives it. It emits radio waves that, when bouncing off an object, in this case an enemy plane, return to the radar and are again captured by it. This way, it constantly knows where the enemy is. This method works wonderfully to find enemies, but it's a bit revealing. When the enemy detects strange radio waves bouncing off him, the plane alerts the pilot that he is being spotted by the enemy, so the pilot will flee or fight, completely losing the element of surprise. On the other hand, IRSTs do not emit anything, they only receive, so with this system your enemy will never know that you are watching him. In addition, these systems not only allow you to see a point on a screen like radars, with IRSTs, you can perfectly see the target graphically day or night and track it to see exactly all its characteristics. All of this sounds wonderful, so why don't we throw the radars in the trash and stick with the infrared search and track systems? Well, the problem with these types of systems is that infrared waves are susceptible to being altered by the environment. Radio waves can travel thousands of kilometers, even millions, with very little interference. In fact, thanks to how unflappable radio waves are, we are constantly sending and receiving them in an attempt to detect extraterrestrial life. But infrared waves, on the other hand, are susceptible to being altered by the environment, weather, clouds, and even distance itself. They are easily distorted, causing IRSTs to not have as good a range as radars. They normally exceed 100 kilometers in range. Because of this, despite their great advantages, they are used alongside radars. IRSTs are almost as old as jet planes. One of the first was used in the early versions of the F-4 Phantom. These under the nose had a protrusion to hold the Texas Instruments ANAAA-4, which was a somewhat primitive infrared search and track system. It did not have enough features for later versions of the F-4 Phantom to have it. But since the Phantoms had this space in the fuselage, it was used for a lot of things. Some versions received a mount for an internal cannon, in others a Doppler radar, or even the same infrared search and track systems were also mounted on it. Again, provisionally for some night missions. After this unfortunate performance, the Americans would give up on these systems, and we would not see them on American combat aircraft for several decades. The Soviets refused to be outdone. The MiG-23s would get the first Soviet infrared search and track systems, the TP-23ML, and later the MiG-25s would have a similar system in the nose. The Soviet IRSTs seemed to have better capabilities than the Americans, and these remained in later aircraft models, like the Flanker or the Fulcrum, up to the present with the Su-57s. By the late 80s, these systems would start to appear again in the United States but we wouldn't see a serious incorporation in combat aircraft until 2015 with the OpenPod infrared search and track. 
Aris by the end of the 2000 decade. The Americans wanted to incorporate this technology into their entire fleet of aircraft, but the problem was that their aircraft could no longer incorporate a system in the fuselage because basically the planes had already been manufactured and modifying them would be a bit costly. So Northrop Grumman brought this new device to light, and RST that could be installed on a standard mount so any plane could have a system and RST regardless of whether it was not designed to have one. So you don't see the infrared search and track bulb on American planes because basically these were not designed to have an infrared search and track system, and they usually use the open pod on a mount as if it were a missile or an external fuel tank. The F-35 was the first modern American plane to have an integrated infrared search and track system. The ANAAQ-37, the most advanced to date probably. And as you can see, it allows you to see targets perfectly as if you had them at your side, day and night. Even in addition to giving almost perfect image quality, it automatically warns of the proximity of enemies and missiles. And it's incorporated within the same plane with windows that give a 360 degree view to the system. Thanks to this, it has no problems with stealth. Wait, did I say stealth? Well, we have to talk about this. Thanks to the infrared search and track systems, stealth planes seem like they could disappear sooner rather than later. Stealth planes are designed to dissipate radio waves, but IRSTs don't need to receive radio waves that bounce off anything. They operate by receiving the heat emitted by these aircraft, which despite design efforts to minimize heat emission, is impossible to eliminate completely. IRSTs are becoming more and more advanced, they are becoming more sensitive and have more range, so stealth technologies are gradually becoming more and more vulnerable to aircraft with these systems. The most advanced ones have 360 degrees operability and even exceed the range of a standard radar. And in fact, it's even worse for stealth bombers, the most expensive units of stealth aircraft, since these bombers operate at a great height, and the higher the altitude, the less dense the atmosphere and the lower the ambient temperature. The range of these devices at such height increases extremely that in ideal cases almost doubles the range of a conventional radar. So in the future we will probably see more infrared search and track systems and fewer stealth aircraft. These systems promise to be the future of aviation, and currently the appetite for these devices seems to be insatiable. If you like this video, you might be interested in this one about how common friendly fire was among World War II bombers. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you next time. Goodbye.